Commissioner Flowers, Commissioner Peters are both running just a little bit late, so they'll be joining us here very shortly. Um, and uh, in the meantime, I want to take the opportunity to welcome you to our May 25th uh, Board of County Commission meeting. Um, we have a, a no, not a terribly busy afternoon, but tonight should be a, a late night as we have a one, one or two hearings that will take us into the evening. But for this afternoon, we should be we should be okay. Um, this uh, we're going to go ahead and start as we always do with the pl uh, invocation uh, this today from w uh, Pastor Willie McClendon from the Shiloh Mission Missionary Baptist Church of Largo. If he'll come on up and give us an invocation, that'll be followed by a pledge uh, from Commissioner Justice. Please join me. Let us pray, please. O oh, almighty and all-wise God, we come this afternoon with thanksgiving on our hearts. We thank you, Father, because we realize that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. So we just say thank you for allowing us to be a part of this time. Bless this meeting, Father. We actually bless the commissioners Lord, help them to make decisions that are best for all of your peoples here in Pinellas County. Have your way. We commit ourselves in this time to you, Father. Bless us, and we thank you for giving us an opportunity to serve others at this present time, for we know that it's by serving others that we serve you. So just have your way. Help us to acknowledge you in everything that we think or do that your will might be done. And Father, when it's all over with, we would have gone the last mile of the way. We want to, to have served in a way where we can hear that welcome benediction, servant, well done. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor McClendon, thank you. That was a, that was a wonderful uh, invocation for us and uh, a good way to think about life. Um, I've got uh, three uh, proclamations today. I'm going to come up there and do them. Um, and um, we, they're really, I think they're each individually and collectively uh, wonderful proclamations, one for our um, international internal audit awareness, uh, one for mental health awareness, and one for obviously Memorial Day uh, proclamation. So with that, I'm going to go up there and, and present the three. first proclamation is for International Internal Audit Awareness Month, and um, um, it is obviously uh, one of our departments here that does incredible work, not only for our, our, uh, our staff, and they take a look at the operations and how they do, but also for our residents to make sure that, that our residents understand that we're being looked at and we're being consulted with by folks that know how to... Uh, to check the operation of our facilities and our and our people, so it, we do good work. They do great work every day. Um, and uh, on a personal note, my my wife was an internal auditor, and she said it was her most satisfying work. It drove her every day to do, to help out our to the, the departments themselves, but also to make it good for our residents um, to know that there was accountability and transparency. Mr. Burke. Um, so today, I'm going to recognize the Clerk of the Circuit Court, Ken Burke, and Inspector General Chief Audit Executive, Melissa Dondero, and they'll both be accepting this. Um, and so I was going to ask you to join me at the podium. You're already here. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and read the proclamation and turn the uh, microphone over to you all. Um, 
whereas the Office of Ken Burke, Clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller, Division of Inspector General's internal audit function, is a vital part of strengthening Pinellas County government and protecting citizens and stakeholders of the, of the public sector, and whereas the Division of Inspector General's internal auditing provides risk-based and objective assurance, advice, and insight to help Pinellas County accomplish its objectives, and whereas the Division of Inspector General's internal auditing helps identify and manage Pinellas County's risks and ensures policies, procedures, and controls are in place and working appropriately, and whereas the Division of Inspector General's internal auditing is an increasingly sophisticated and complex activity requiring specialized knowledge, training, and education, and whereas internal auditing is an established profession led by the Institute of Internal Auditors with a globally recognized code of ethics and interna international standards for the professional practice of internal auditing and whereas the contribution of internal auditors to the success of organizations and the global economy at large deserves our recognition and, and uh, commendations. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of Pinellas Board of County Commissioners that the uh, month of May 2021 be recognized as International Internal Audit Awareness Month. The Board commends the Office of Ken Burke, Clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller, Division of Inspector General, for promoting accountability and integrity in government and preserving the public trust by providing independent and objective internal audits designed to add value and improve Pinellas County operations. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. And we'll come over here, if you don't mind, for some pictures. And then the microphone is yours. Which way do we stand? This way? That way? We're going to face okay. that way. <laughs> you, could, you guys hold it in the middle there. Thank you. Just a few quick remarks. First of all, thank you for the proclamation. It's certainly appreciated. But more importantly than the proclamation is the cooperation we have with the county administrator and the departments under the Board of County Commission. Commissioner Seal's been around a long time and it's not always been this cooperative. Um, but I think you've seen the value of the internal audit shop and the Inspector General's office. We're not there to bring criticism to departments. We're there to help improve, as the chair said in, in his remarks in the beginning from his wife, it's to add value and to make government better. And um, as long as we all have that a goal, um, this process is very successful and very cooperative. I also appreciate the many suggestions that come from the commissioners on areas of the county government that you wish us for to look at. That's very helpful. And you all been very active in, 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 in giving us um, different areas, and that's very healthy. It shows you're doing your job as commissioners and oversight and the clerk's office and our internal audit role. We're doing our job. I'll now turn it over to Melissa. Before that, I want to introduce Monica. Monica is with the association which is, um, has the uh, uh, recognition name for us. And we also have Ava with our um, Inspector General's Office. Ava, stand. Uh, recon um, auditors tend to be shy. And, and, and Robert, it's good to see you. Please stand and, and be recognized. Melissa, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Ken. So good afternoon, commissioners. On behalf of the clerk's office, our division, and the Institute of Internal Auditors, we would like to thank you for recognizing our profession. And I was gonna acknowledge Ava and Robert and Monica, but Ken, Ken um, already did that for me. So I appreciate their support and joining me today in accepting this proclamation. This proclamation demonstrates your support for the internal audit function and the service we have provided to Pinellas County staff and citizens for the past 38 years. This proclamation is important as it serves to build awareness of the essential role internal auditing plays in strong organizational governance, internal controls, and effective risk management. As internal auditors, we also identify opportunities for our county to become a more effective and efficient entity. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. In our sec second proclamation, um, 
it's extremely important to this commission, um, and I know previous commissions, uh, but it's uh, the Mental Health Awareness Month 2021. Uh, we've got um, some great partners in the community that do the work uh, for the residents of this county, but and, and in the same time, we are doing uh, some introspective look and, and taking a look at our program to make sure that we deliver the right and, and full uh, service that we hope to do. Uh, that process is ongoing. Um, be between having a central point of, of entry and accountability and service, that work is still pr progressing and hopefully that'll be in place in the next year or so. Um, but today it is Mental Health Awareness uh, Month and, um, and, and so I would like to have Denise Whitfield um, and Ann Rogers, uh, the president of NAMI, uh, Pinellas Board of Directors, come on up and join me. Thank you. Right over here if you'd like so that people can see you. Hi. I'm going to read the proclamation and then let you all have the microphone. Um, each year in May, the Institute of Internal Auditors, excuse me, apologize, had the wrong paper. At least I recognized that it was the wrong paper and didn't read it again. Um, all right. As a community, we continue to learn more and more every day about the serious and widespread impacts of mental illness. Today, I want to recognize the National Alliance of Mental Illness, NAMI, of Pinellas County during this month of May, National Mental Health Awareness Month. For 35 years, NAMI of Pinellas County and their dedicated volunteers have served over 70,000 individuals and their families. Through their programs, NAMI Pinellas has provided support, evidence-based education courses and resources created a pathway for peers to earn their certification designation to enter the workforce, advocated for access to services, treatment, and research, and is steadfast in its commitment to changing the way our community addresses mental health. And on behalf of the Pinellas Board of County Commissioners, we thank you for the service that you provide to our communities. With increased knowledge comes a responsibility to act and our county is working hard every day to end the stigma of mental illness and to get treatment for those who are suffering the most. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Pinellas County Board of County Commissioners that May 2021 be recognized as Mental Health <laughs> Awareness Month. Here. Thank you to the county commissioners for recognizing Mental Health Awareness Month. Historically, one out of five Americans will be affected by a mental health condition in any given year. Reports have shown now that one in three adults are reporting signs and symptoms of anxiety or depression. Mental illness does not care what race, gender, socioeconomic, or faith that you identify with. It affects us all. NAMI Pinellas is a key driver in promoting mental health and public awareness in our communities and is fulfilling the vision of our founding members. As a local mental health leader, NAMI Pinellas plays a key role in crafting a shared vision for mental health to achieve a common goal, improving lives and offering hope. We have launched our Peers in Recovery Mentorship Program to provide more peer support that is so vital in our behavioral health community. Today, behavioral health agencies, including NAMI, all over the country are beginning to implement peer specialists. This has placed a renowned spotlight on the importance of peer support and is creating enormous demand in the job market for trained, experienced, certified peer specialists who can help reverse this harrowing trend. For people affected by mental illness, NAMI is the most extensive national network for support, education, advocacy, and public awareness. Through our state office and our community affiliates, this is a singular force for good that delivers critical programs and services that make a difference in the lives of millions of people. Grounded in the belief that we are stronger together, NAMI focuses on bringing hope to individuals and families, 
shaping public policy, and fueling a national conversation on mental health. On behalf of the staff, board, volunteers, and the thousands of individuals that come to NAMI for support services, we thank you again for recognizing Mental Health Awareness Month. Thank you so much. Our, our third proclamation today certainly uh, is important to this commission and to the residents and to the uh, many, many VFWs and uh, legion posts around the county, but is, is in memory, or excuse me, memory of all of those who, who died serving our country uh, on the battlefields and afterwards. So this is Memorial Day 2021, and I'd, I'd like to have the VFW all-American Post 12186 in Oldsmar join me at the podium. And here today, come on up, uh, to accept this proclamation are Post Commander David Baer, um, David McKinley, uh, David McKinley uh, Jr., Vice Commander, and Dana Barrows, Auxiliary President. And it's so good to have you all here today. Really, really proud of the VFW of Oldsmar. They do an incredible job working with the city and doing Veterans Day, Purple Heart Day, Memorial Day, um, and I've had a chance to participate in several of those events, and it's really always first rate. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to read a proclamation and then turn the microphone over to you all, okay? <clears throat> Since the late 19th century, each year in May, Americans pause to observe Memorial Day, a special day and a national holiday since 1971, set aside to remember with dignity and admiration those who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation. And whereas throughout our nation's history, our brave men and women of the military have stepped forward to protect our country. And today our service men and women continue to inspire and strengthen our nation going above and beyond the call of duty as part of the greatest military the world has ever known. And we, and we are grateful to all of those who have donned our nation's uniform and to their families, and we will always remember their service and sacrifice for our freedom. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Pinellas County Board of County Commissioners that May 31st, 2021, be recognized as Memorial Day 2021 in Pinellas County. Thank you. And just, just as a point of introduction, uh, David Baer is the commander of the post, and he serves as Florida District 21's uh, vice commander. In addition, he is the Department of Florida VFW Police, Fire, and EMT Program Chairman. When he's not handling his VFW duties, Commander Baer is performing firefighter, EM, firefighter EMT duties in Pasco County and in the city of Newport Ritchie. Uh, David McKinley is uh, the junior vice commander of post 12186 and and of course dana barrows is here as the auxiliary president so we're going to take a picture here let's let you hold that microphone is yours thank you uh -huh. on behalf of VFW Post 12186 and its auxiliary. Uh, we would like to thank you for the honor of receiving the proclamation, and most importantly, uh, just the appreciation to acknowledge the day. 57% of Americans last year had no idea what Memorial Day is. It's meaningful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Anybody else? You sure? Okay, okay. Sir. great. Yes. Appreciate thank it. you all. Commissioners, I should have said this at the beginning, but if any of you all had any comments on any of the proclamations, please, as always, feel free to, to interject uh, any of your thoughts or comments. But uh, I just Mr. really Chair. want... Yes, Commissioner Long. Well, as a 
person who has had family members, including my own son, serve on active duty in a combat zone, I am really concerned about why I find it incredulous that 50% of our folks would not know what Memorial Day is about, and you have to wonder what on earth is going on in our curriculums that these kids are not aware. Yeah, that's, I agree. Yeah. So, and, and that's why I think softball that, yeah. to our former school board member. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Commissioner oh, Flowers, there you go. <laughs> well, um, I was raising my hand to, to say something about that, but as it relates to um, civics, um, as you all probably are aware, um, it hasn't been that long ago, maybe two years, that um, civics became a requirement within the Pinellas County uh, school structure uh, as a result of legislative action. Um, but I think it's not just the students, it's also um, perhaps those of us that have just gotten so accustomed to a day of celebration, you know, just picnicking and having those types of things and not really thinking about what's behind that, you know, and the essence of it. So um, I would hope that now that that is a requirement, especially before persons graduate, that there is as much of a comprehensive introduction to the history of a number of different things to include Memorial Day. Um, and other days um, so that our children will know and we'll keep that going. Um, and it is, I, I would have to agree because most of our schools have an ROTC approach. Um, so, but I just wanted to say thank you to uh, the representatives that were here today. Um, I'm the baby of 12 and there are only two of us that did not go into the military and I will admit I was chicken. I didn't want to get up. <laughs> I didn't want to get up for bivouac and I didn't want to do any of those things so I went to college and so did my sister. But my father um, was in the army. All of my sisters and brothers that went to the military were in the army except one went to the Navy and that was because my grandfather did. So um, I have uh, participated in a number of events voluntarily for the VFW on 18th Avenue South. Um, as free labor. <laughs> and so um, I have been to a number of other VFWs as a result of the camaraderie and events. And I just want to say thank you so much for your continued service. And thank you for um, still having that passion in your heart um, for the country that you fought for. Um, and for those who aren't with us, but they fought and died valiantly, we ought to always remember their service and their sacrifice. So thank you so much. Commissioner Flowers, so well said. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and you know, I, to your point, Commissioner Long, you know, we always hear it takes a it takes a village, right, to to raise a kid. So it, it it falls on us to recognize folks at these kind of events like today. It falls on us as parents to do the same thing with our kids to celebrate Memorial Day as a day off, but also for what it stands for and our schools to do probably a little better job of recognizing these important dates leading up to the, to the actual day. So um, thank you for your heartfelt comment. I know uh, it really does make your heart hurt to see that, uh, that waning memory of, of what this is really all about. So whether it's Memorial Day, Purple Heart Day, uh, Veterans Day, we are gonna continue recognizing it here and encouraging parents and teachers and everybody to make sure that we don't forget um, our heroes. So thank you for being here and thank you for all of those who came and participated in the different proclamations. Okay. Okay, we um, are going to citizens to be heard and um, we have um, two in person and uh, three uh, on online attuned, uh, uh, online using Zoom. Uh, we'll go first uh, here in, in the house to Greg Pound, and that'll be followed by um, David Ballard Geddes, Jr. So, Kat, once we have these two, we'll go to the three, at least, that I have registered here. Greg Pound, Largo, Florida. Um, I'd like to share with the county here of a problem that we've seen over in Tampa at the Gay Pride Parade this past week. As I've shared with this committee, that sex outside of marriage breeds violence and hate, breeds it. And when you see the violence 
of me standing with a sign that says, sex is not love, and when I get attacked, and then I get no support from law enforcement, I, I, I just think it's, it's unbelievable. We're destroying ourselves. You know when Christ said, go make disciples of all nations? He said, if we don't teach our children and ourselves discipline, that we're not going to survive. Without discipline, we, we're not going to survive as a people in the nation. And if you want to see what wealth does, look at the people who win the lottery. And we're being destroyed because of our wealth. We're not being persecuted as other countries for their Christianity and the way they choose to live. We're being seduced into a life of pleasure that's destroying us and destroying our children. It's our wealth that's killing us. You want to see what wealth does? Just, just look at what it does when people have it. I mean, we are in a mess. And you're bringing this, you're bringing this to, to Pinellas County this next month, downtown St. Pete, with all these little children marching in these parades and these people. I mean, Charlie Crist, I mean, driving through that parade like he's the, like, like, come on, are you kidding me? And he brings that over to Pinellas County and you guys support it. I mean, we're just, you're just destroying yourselves. You really are. I mean, the white culture has become so evil and it's just out, it's out of control corruption. I mean, you look at the people that were down there, it was, it was like, I mean, the only way I can describe it would be like Sodom and Gomorrah. People out of control. Do you ever see anyone out of control? I mean, that's, that's what it is. And, and you say anything to them? You mean to tell me, a, a young girl started crying because I told her sex was not love. She was like 18, 19 years old. And when she got the message after I explained to her, you, don't, you can love your neighbor without sex. And when she finally got it, the girl started crying, just started bawling, crying. Because she's being convinced by our society and the filth we see on television and all this other stuff that sex is love. It's destroying us, destroying our families, our children. I mean, it's out of control corruption. And that's why the Bible says, listen, go make disciples of all nations. And that's what we've been called to do as a church. And when churches are marching into this thing, saying love is kosher. No, they should have said love is not sex. Marching with these, um, with these rainbow colors. Rainbow colors is a promise that God, he's going to judge us. The rainbow is a promise from the creator. He's going to judge humanity. David Ballard Geddes Jr. and then uh, Mark Johnson. Hi, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, David Ballard Geddes Jr. I live on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. One and one and one is three. Hold us in these arms until we can feel this disease. Killing us softly with this song. Imagine no religion too. Do you know where you're going to? Dear Prudence, let's stop talking falsely now. The hour is getting late. I've looked at this Constitution from both sides now, near and far. Tip your hat to the new Constitution and pray we won't get fooled again. Just like yesterday, this gun's for hire, even though this Constitution's just dancing in the dark. Someone left the Const uh, Declaration of Independence out in the rain. I don't know if I can take it. It took so long to fake it. Islands in the stream, water jurisdictions in the state. That is what this is. Eminent front, it's a put on. Drive the county lean into a water district levy. And is the water district levy going to go dry? Smoke on the water. We got inverted. They bought and sold us. We're talking about the Midnight Rambler. Hang around St. Petersburg. It is time for a change. Legislation to the left of me, Senate to the right. And here I am stuck in the middle with you. We live in a material world. And it in the 14th Amendment, based on Federalist Paper 15, is an immaterial word. London Bridge is falling down. I look at the floor. I see the House of Representatives needs sweeping. It is the end of the world as you know it. Cuckoo, cachoo, there is no forward pass. You are in a cast. To the egg man and the walrus, you came down with the sickness. To the world, take a look at yourself and make a change. Thank you. Thank you, David. Very creative. Thank you. All right, Mark, uh, Mark Johnson.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks again for this uh, tremendously great opportunity to stand and just say uh, a few things about this wonderful life that uh, the Lord has given to us. You know, I had the uh, privilege of going to the uh, uh, to the Pride Parade down in Tampa on uh, uh, other day, and you know, I'm thinking uh, it's gay pride, right? Okay, so I'm a gay guy. Now, what does that mean? You know, I was telling these folk uh, about me and about what a gay person I am, and they kind of got that misunderstood. I was down at this parade, and I've shared with you all before, God called me to be a preacher. I did not call myself. And what that means is I preach. I tell people about Jesus Christ and how they can be saved and born again. Now, at the Gay Pride, I'm thinking I could do this because I'm, I appreciate everybody. I think everybody's lost and needs to be saved. So every opportunity I get, I tell somebody about life. That's who God is. That's who Jesus is. And I was down at this parade, and all of a sudden, there's a couple other guys down there preaching also. And the next thing I know, man, they're kicking these guys all over the place. And they had their microphones, and their microphone get kicked out, the battery get they tore, up, tore it all, all apart. And then they took the signs that these, these guys that supposed to have freedom of, of speech like everybody else, and tore their signs up, and just kicked them around like nobody. They're standing for freedom. They're standing for, they say for truth. But then when we bring truth, we can't even speak. Now what, what's going on? And so the one guy was asking me, he said, well, I thought you were gay. I said, well, I am gay. That means I'm happy, I'm jolly, man. I have a good time in life. I enjoy living. Man, I'm gay all the time. There's a verse that say rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, what's the problem? Now, how, how can they be fighting for right, right, rights, for freedom, and then they kick a guy around for, for telling them what freedom is? The truth shall make you free. All this stuff that you're making yourself, that ain't freedom. That's more hostage and bondage. The truth shall make you free. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. You come to me, you got life. If you don't, you got death. I don't care who you are. It's time to get life, guys, and teach our kids and our families and our community what real life's about. All that other stuff is going to take you right where you're taking all these people that think they're gay. You're not gay. I'm gay. I'm happy. I'm jolly. I got to have a great time in life. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you Pastor. Okay. We have uh, three folks that are, should be waiting online. Go ahead, Kat. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, the first person is Ms. Aiden Barnes. Ms. Barnes, it looks like you've already raised your hand in the Zoom application, so once you're unmuted, if you could state and spell your name for the record, you will have three minutes, ma'am. My name is Aiden Barnes. Um, my address is 10240 127th Ave in Largo. I'm calling in today um, in opposition to the five cent gas tax increase. Um, I looked into some news articles from last year and I read that the commissioners voted in taxes already last year. The only commissioner who voted against it was Kathleen Peters. Um, and then here we are today, after the year we've already had, um, you know, looking at a new tax increase. And I even did some research into some news articles and see that the commissioners are even thinking about another tax increase after that, some sort of transit tax. I don't know a whole lot about that one yet, but I did listen into the budget meeting um, last week, and I was dismayed that we didn't have a presentation on the penny for Pinellas. I feel like that should have been the first priority because when I looked up the penny for Pinellas website, um, we were told when we voted in that tax that it would be used for roads, for repaving roads, for repaving sidewalks, and those seem like the main issues here um, that need to be paid for. And um, I think that I, I, I don't see the point of paying um, for Penny for Pinellas if, you know, we're just going to be taxed anyways for things like sidewalks and roads, you know. Um, 
So I like some of the suggestions. Barry Burton made a suggestion. Maybe you could cut the mow times in half, like like let the grass grow longer in the medians. Um, I was looking into Tarpon Springs, and they actually trim trees over their roads. So maybe that could be a solution working with the city governments. Um, I appreciate the city of Seminole standing up against this. Um, they don't want tax increases. Um, some of the beach cities are voting against it. Unfortunately, my city of Largo voted for it because before this can be put in place, there needs to be an interlocal agreement. Um, to say that, you know, members of this board said it would be death by a thousand cuts, but we're getting death by a thousand cuts with all these tax increases. You know, our property taxes are already among the highest per median in the country. Um, people who are trying to move here to work in the service industry, they're having a hard time. The rents are so high. I met a nice couple over the weekend. Um, they have to live in holiday and commute and, you know, and just this gas tax is only going to hurt them. You know, when prices get higher, it just widens the gap of inequality for people who are lower income. You know, tax increases on everyday people is not a good thing. So I just like to ask the board to look into more ways to um, not raise this new five cent gas tax. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden. Mr. Chair, the next speaker is Mr. David Happy. Mr. Happy, if you've joined us, if you could press uh, star nine on your telephone or raise your hand in the Zoom application. And it looks like Mr. Happy might have joined us through the phone line, last four digits, 4945. Mr. Happy, when you are unmuted, if you could state and spell your name for the record, state your address, you will have three minutes.
And Mr. Chair, the last speaker that I have is Mr. Daniel Amend. Mr. Amend, if you could raise your hand in the Zoom application if you are on the line. And Daniel Amend. And it does not appear that Mr. Amend has joined us. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. About the um, proposed gas, down with the proposed gas tax as well. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to pass that along. So that's all of the comments that we had uh, for citizens to be heard. I think we have 11 items under the consent agenda. And do I have a motion for approval? Move Commissioner Jarrett on the second. Anybody want to pull anything for discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, moving on to the regular agenda. Um, first thing up under administrative services, Mr. Burton. Uh, item number 15 is a change order number three to agreements uh, to increase the limit uh, to the construction contracts uh, listed. These are our job order contracting um, um, bids that, that provide things like facility, maintenance, repair, minor construction. Again, all these are pre-bid um, items that have itemized costs. They've used the contracts more for construction projects this year, and so they're asking to increase the limits for uh, to do more projects. Okay, any, um, any questions for the, for the administrator? We have a motion, please. Motion by Commissioner Gerard, second by Commissioner Peters. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Uh, my apologies on the last vote, it was also six to zero. All right, moving on, under county administrator, we have several projects coming forward for some MSTU funding. Item number 16 is the Community Service Association Palm um, Harbor Parks and Recreation. Uh, this is special projects funds uh, for them to update essential equipment and certain restroom facilities for $20,000. Okay, any a move, a motion by Commissioner Peters, second by Commissioner uh, Justice. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Oh, six to zero, excuse me. Now on to number 17, East Lake Community this Library. This is East Lake Community Library. Again, um, special uh, project funds. This would provide essential technology and the expanded technology tech deck will allow um, for increased Wi-Fi wi access for patrons who bring uh, their own uh, devices, again, for $20,000. Commissioner Gerard on the motion, Commissioner Peters on the second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Item 18, East this, Lake Recreation. This is again a special project funds. This is for installation of illuminated digital signs for their sports complex entry uh, to allow increased uh, communication um, for upcoming events and programming. Commissioner Peters on the motion, Commissioner Long on the second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Next up, Palm Harbor Library. Item 19 is special project funds for the replacement of all flooring throughout the 26,000 square foot facility uh, for the library for $20,000. Uh, $20, Commissioner Peters on the motion, Com uh, Commissioner Justice on the second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Moving on to the no, item 20, Florida Dream Center. Um, and this is also for special project funds. This will provide a new van for their mobile food pantry. Um, what they've been able to accomplish is distribute over 252,000 pounds of food to local pantries and over 378,000 uh, pounds of, of food um, in bulk to other facilities like veterans villages, low income apartments, churches, shelters, etc. So again, this is a request for a not to exceed grant amount of twenty thousand dollars. Commissioner Justice on the motion, Commissioner Long on the second. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Um, the last one of these is for Seminole Junior Warhawk Athletic Association. 
Um, this request is for $19,500, um, and this will provide for regrading of low-lying areas that collect and hold water for their uh, soccer fields. Commissioner Peters on the motion, Commissioner Justice on the second. Mr. Yeah, any, yes, go ahead. Um, before we take a vote on this issue, I would like to know, uh, Barry, if you wouldn't mind a little bit of an update on where we are, given that those, uh, we, we've talked about this for quite some time, and there was an effort ongoing to create a, an umbrella organization that would manage all three of these fields. And, you know, I, I know that at one time, I think a lot of us do, it, it was a special taxing district and it sunsetted after 10 years and then it was approved again for another 10 years. But when it came up again, the, it, the referendum went down and so I'm very curious about whether or not there's a plan, if there's a long-term strategy, or are we just going to keep on mending the issues as they come up? Well, there's um, certainly the issue of the what we're doing here is to update the, the fields. So that is, a, that is a need. The overarching issue about management of the different entities and dissolving the one entity that was the original establishing um, setup, that is it's a complex issue, as you know. We've, um, we have a master plan for all the sites. It talks about what their needs are, what they envision, um, and we are using a consultant to produce a report. As of as early as um, yesterday morning, I met with the city of Seminole to get their thoughts and needs because, you know, in this particular area, you got a lot of people that are accessing city services accessing these services. You've got some of these leagues that are not providing just basic recreation services. These are competition, and so they're not even serving just unincorporated residents. And so you'd be putting a taxing body in that, that is really used for something that's done on a region. So it is complex. We're trying to pull all those pieces together, and we'll be producing a report for you to discuss options and, uh, later this, this year. So it will come back before us later this year? It will. I think it might be a good idea considering two of those fields actually are involved with um, professional ball teams that are looking at these kids to uh, go on to the Olympics and that we might maybe be able to form partnerships with those organizations and defray some of the cost over the long uh, haul just because at some point it would be nice to have a real plan. We're, work, we're working on it. We, there's a lot of um, competing interest um, and thoughts. And, um, and so you've got the structural issues and then you have the financial issues. And so we're, we're trying to pull all those pieces together. And again, that will be a, a report and uh, recommendations that will be brought to you later this year. And so Mr. Chair, finally, if I may, I do think that there is some value in taking a look at the statute that was created in law dealing with this particular special district because it's still on the books. And the last time I met with them, they had a little bit of money in there. But, you know, there's got to be some, there's got to be some way to either get rid of that statute and start fresh or, and I don't know, maybe that'll be part of the plan that it, they bring forward. It, it will be because we're trying to push this because obviously we know the deadlines for um, any legislation that would be needed. Um, and so we're trying to align those to where we can get this done prior and work with our delegation if there's a legislative uh, piece to this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Okay, we had a motion, we had a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, moving on to management and budget. This is a an item number 22, federally, uh, this is a subaward and grant agreement with the State of Florida Division of Emergency Management. Uh, this will um, en enable us to access the $30 million of COVID funds that we've spent thus far. Any questions?
Commissioner Gerard on the motion, Commissioner Flowers on the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, under public works. Um, item number 23, this is the interlocal agreement um, between the county and municipalities uh, that would establish the um, distribution process if the commissioners later this year as part of the budget process choose to increase the lo local option um, fuel tax. Um, that, so this establishes the distribution method being 60-40. It's the same as it's currently been. As part of the budget process, we're gonna develop budget recommendations and we'll discuss it at that time. However, by statute, we have to have this in place by June the 1st. Um, and then the if you were to actually take an act on the fuel tax, that would have to be done by October the 1st. We have um, um, resolutions um, supporting the distribution by um, representatives of over 80% of our population. Um, and so it's here for your consideration. Um, the approval for the, the essentially the interlocal agreement. The interlocal agreement. Yeah. Okay. So we have, the, you know, the, obviously the largest uh, municipalities and That's then fine. several small, but it, uh, altogether it's a little over 80% yeah. of the representative population. Yeah. So again, I think the one of the calls that was talking about um, I think a couple of them talking about the gas tax. That's not what we're voting on here today. That will be discussed later. As yeah, and I would I would turn to the the caller that that talked about wanting to hear about the penny. That will be part of the process. We're only halfway through our budget hearings, um, and so we'll have another round of three days coming up here in June. And part of that will be the capital improvement projects, which is penny for Pinellas. What are those dates, Barry? Just so we can make sure folks. June uh, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, so June 16, 17, 18, we'll have additional budget workshops on additional items, and the penny will be one of those items discussed. That's correct. Okay. Um, and there'll be ongoing conversations about the gas tax. This is not what we're doing today. We're not voting on increasing the gas tax. That so is, this is just correct. the interlocal agreement that provides for the distribution of whatever is in place now or, and or if there's any increases, how that will be handled as well. But this is simply the, the interlocal agreement. Any other questions? Yeah, yes, Commissioner Long, sorry. Thank you, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. So Barry, we discussed at our meeting uh, last week, and I do believe it was Commissioner Justice that asked for a full-throated discussion on the issue of raising taxes and our millage rates, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm very anxious to know if you know now when that meeting might take place simply because as one of the, our constituents alluded to how we raised taxes last year, I think it's really, really important to understand what that means in the context of our millage and the rollback issue. I know I've spoken several times to our Tuesday club, and that issue always surfaces because it's complex and difficult for people to understand. And I think that would be very helpful, not only for members here who may need a little refresher, but also for our citizens who may be listening. So you won't uh, officially adopt a budget for next year, which would be those actions until September. Um, we, uh, I'll present to you um, a budget recommendation. We'll, we'll, that will look at everything. And you, I don't think you can take one particular piece in, out of context. It, it needs to be looked at cumulatively at both our reserves, at the money that we did save. If you, if you recall back, we reduced our spending by 8% for the Board of Commissioner Departments last year. However, we did put more money in reserves in, anticip in anticipation of a worse year than we had. And so we have that on the table and we're gonna discuss our reserve levels. We're gonna discuss the issues with our transportation trust fund. We're gonna discuss the issues of our property taxes and cumulatively come up to a budget recommendation. I'll present that to you at the July 13th meeting. Um, and then we have from July 13th all the way until September to before we actually make a decision. So there's, we're, we're only into the uh, uh, departments presenting their thoughts and ideas. 
um, we will get to the debate and discussion of all of those issues collectively to where you can make an informed decision. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Barry. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Commissioner Seal. Um, yes, this often happens, and so it's not because it's on your watch, but um, the interlocal agreement went out to the cities without our approval first. And so we're feeling like now we have a lot of approvals from the city, but we haven't approved it. No, I brought it, I brought it here to this board and said, can we send this out to the cities? Okay. And then, and then it was on for here for approval. So I brought okay. it to the board first okay. at a Thank work you. session and got your approval. Okay. Um, so, but to that context, and I probably should have brought it up before and forgive me, I, um, I don't remember when we had this on the agenda before. Um, but anyway, the, um, we had discussed that a future county commission could decide to roll back the gas rate tax if we decided to look at an infrastructure sales tax. However, within the provisos of here, the cities are allowed to bond the monies, which puts us into a perilous situation for any future commission to be able to roll back that gas tax. I just wanted to make sure everybody was cognizant of that because, and it talks about reauthorizing it every 10 years because that does put us into a, if we agree with this, then, you know, we've set the stage. And I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Uh, yeah, I, I think one of the things that we'd have to, the, the check on that really is, at least in the discussions from the city that I came from, uh, that bonding is really minimally 20 years or 30 years. Um, and these are 10-year renewals, I think. So not probably going to get into that, but, I mean, it's certainly a possibility, and I think that, that's something maybe we need to take a look at. But I think we'll be okay in most instances on the bonding side. Commissioner Seal. Um, the only other question I have, and maybe we could, um, is how much of a difference this new um, would be based on population estimates of April 1st of 2020 and the current gas tax that we implement. Is there much of a difference in the population numbers? And do we remember what that might be based on? Bill, do you know the answer to that? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, it just occurred to me as I was looking at this and looking at the percentage splits. Hi, Bill. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, the current interlocal for the one to six cent is based on, I believe it's 2015 population. Okay. So it's a five year change, uh, but the changes in population from one city to the next have been <laughs> largely small. I and figured it's a it was strange way of minimal. saying that. Now that I think about it, largely small, but there hasn't been <laughs> there has not been a large uh, change for any individual city. So the distribution formula is pretty much equivalent, uh, with small differences from city to city. So did are they set for the ten years? Yes, that's what I thought. Okay, all right. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. And Barry, you know, I think, uh, again, one of the questions that was brought up by our residents that called in um, is part of that overall budget that we're, we're going right. to be talking about are some reimbursement funds that we've gotten from CARES to expenses. And we, you've kind of kept us up to speed on where the funds are going and what's still to go. But it might be, again, an op another opportunity that we can... I, you yeah. know, we have that on our website. We, I, I the understand. People that have I, I guess I get it. And uh, we've responded to requests for that. Okay. Well, again, I think it's always good to be, have another avenue to display the information that we are already displaying. Yeah. It doesn't hurt. So, again, people are trying to get information one way or another, but. Um, um, but I, it, this will all come together. It will come together as part of your budget. And so the question is, are you looking at property taxes? You also, when you're looking at the gas tax, I get the, the issue that they were raising. We've averaged it out. If you do a 25, if you get 25 miles to gallon, 20, you know, 1,000 miles a year, that's about $27, you know, a person. However, you know, you also have to look at 40% of that money is coming from people that visit here um, that don't live here. And property taxes go straight to you know, people that own property. So there's there's a couple of different ways of looking at it. We're going to look at all that as part of the budget, and that's the reason you'll have one budget that we present in July that gives us plenty of time for those debate yeah. 
and discussions about which option is the best way to move forward. And I think I think staff is keenly aware of what we've just gone through and where we are. So we're, we're working hard to try to minimize any of those changes, but uh, we'll be looking forward to that discussion next month, those three days you gave us, and then obviously when you bring the, the budget recommendation in July. Correct. And that's a month or two before we formally approve, so. Mm -hmm. But for residents to get involved now and in next month and in July is a good thing because once it gets to September, it's almost a done deal. So all the work is going on now. So I appreciate all the residents uh, reaching out to us. Um, okay, um, let's see. So any other questions on, on item 23, which uh, again, this is interlocal agreement between the county and municipalities representing the majority population of the incorporated Pinellas counties for distribution of proceeds. It's just the method and the amount and how that, not the amount, but how the distribution actually occurs in position of one through five cent local option fuel gas tax on every gallon of motor fuel or diesel sold in the county. So we're, yes, Commissioner Flowers. Well, we're talking about the, the additional, Nick, the additional five cents. The, 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 what we have on the books now is six. Six. Six plus one. Six plus one. We have this actually is up seven. to an additional yeah. five. A maximum, I think, in the whole, the state is at 12%. So, That's correct. And we're at, uh, at, seven. at seven right now with the six plus the additional ninth cent, ninth cent tax. So any other, any other questions now that I've probably confused? everybody trying to be clear. <laughs> um, so do we have a motion on this? Commissioner second. Gerard on the motion, um, on the motion and Commissioner Long on the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Was that? Okay, no, six to one. Uh, we move on to item 24. Uh, this is a road transfer agreement with the, uh, from the county to the city of St. Petersburg. Uh, this would be taking certain segments and turning over, over operation maintenance responsibility for Central Avenue. Um, it also goes with a one-time payment for our planned resurfacing of Central Avenue. Any questions? No questions, do I have a motion please? Did you have a question, Commissioner Gerard? Is it also ninth? Uh, it, it, okay? it has various road segments on Martin Luther King Street um, it from. Like quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. Just. Did you get your question answered, Commissioner Gerard? Uh, it looks like a very long segment to me, but okay. We have Kelly here if you'd like. That's all right. I just want to make sure we included Ninth Street or. MLK, sorry, MLK. Any other questions? Okay, so I need a motion. Commissioner Gerard on the motion. Second. Commissioner Long on the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 25 under emergency medical services authority. These are appointments to for of uh, Chief Chad Pittman um, as the Fire Chiefs Association primary representative, Chief Scott Young as the alternate, and the reappointment of Becky Teeter uh, to serve another two years as a citizen representative. Motion, motion by Commissioner Peters, second by Commissioner Long. Any questions on that? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, item 26 under county attorney, please. Under item number 26, I am uh, recommending that the county commission approve staff's recommendation uh, as set forth in the confidential agenda item. Second. Commissioner Peters on the motion, Commissioner Long on the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 27. Item 27, I'm not asking for any action today. Uh, we'll be bringing this matter back to the county commission at your first meeting in June. Okay. Anything else? Redistricting on there just as a placeholder in case you all have any questions. Uh, we'll be anticipating seeing some more action on that uh, later this summer. Okay. County Administrator reports. Uh, commissioners, I'm very pleased today to um, announce that at the June 8th meeting, we will be bringing forward um, a behavioral health coordinated access model 
um, contract to begin planning for that implementation. Um, as you know, our team's worked over this past year with KPMG to develop the optimal data set. That's the foundational document to have performance metrics to be able to move into a coordinated access model. We're on target to finish this next step in the development um, as outlined in the previous time frame, and as you approved in the strategic action plan back in 2019. Uh, we started the implementation um, to b gain a better understanding of our entire behavioral health system, which includes access, quality, and capacity. Uh, again, using KPMG, who's been our partner in this, uh, we'll be bringing a contract forward at the June 8th meeting uh, to begin the process of implementing a coordinated access model in Pinellas County. And uh, so um, I know I've briefed you one-on-one, -on -one, um, and uh, we're excited to get started. So. That is one item that I had for today. The other one is um, just a brief statement. We all read about the, um, uh, the lawsuit fired, uh, filed against the Rays. Um, and you know that has that um, obviously been a little bit problematic and has caused us to have discussions between us and the city. As you're also all aware, uh, we had began working with the city on bringing a consultant on board to really look at the financial model of professional baseball here in Pinellas County, and especially with regarding the, uh, the proposed split season model, the financial impact of that and the economic impact of that, along with the cost. Um, we were just beginning that process. This is, um, has caused us to say, let's pause this while the city kind of uh, figures out where to go with this and what, you know, uh, what that means. I mean, anybody can file a lawsuit. It doesn't mean that we're stopping that process. I think we want to, we just need to um, take time to read that engage, re-engage with the city, but I would still would like to see that process move forward. But um, obviously that was a big deal. I've talked to both the team and with the city and the mayor, um, and everybody's trying to figure out what, what the next steps are right now, so. Yeah, and the only add piece I would add is that I'm staying in close contact with the chair of the council so that uh, I, I, I try to understand what um, the council them, themselves are thinking. There seems to be a, can, a little bit of a difference yeah. approach between the mayor's office and the council. So I think Barry's and I are trying to make sure that we get a handle on, on both of those. And at this point, they're both waiting to, to get some, some uh, legal updates, I guess, or consulting from their own legal team. Commissioner Justice and then Commissioner Flowers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just to be clear, <laughs> the consultant that we secured to do the evaluation of everything, have we paused that or are they still doing their work? Well, we had initial conversations with them. We're actually trying to get through the procurement process um, with the city because of uh, some insurance requirements and that. So we actually hadn't even signed the final contract yet, um, which was a whole nother, you know, issue. Um, but we were looking forward to get, you know, getting started with that. We had engaged, or I at least had conversations with the team, um, and we were hoping to bring all parties together. This, I want to make very clear for people that's watching, that's a completely separate process from the redevelopment of Tropicana Fields. Um, that is a separate process within the city and the cities, uh, you know, they have sole um, control over that outside of the county government. Um, but that was the process that I had discussed with each of you. Um, we were hoping to at least begin to frame out ideas and thoughts. Now the mayor's kind of reassessing that. I will engage with him and see where he's at on it. Um, and you know, I, I'll know more in you know a few days or a week. Yeah, the, the team put out a statement completely denying the charges from the lawsuit. Um, I just saw that before we came in today, but and I and I did discuss that with the team. Um, that is their stance. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important that uh, we, as soon as possible continue moving the dialogue forward. And um, I think that the council is ready for for that, and I know the mayor seems to be ready for that. So once we get through this, um, um, I don't know how brief a hiccup it, it is, uh, but I think at least after that's taken care of, I think we need to get the city of St. Petersburg to get over some of their issues on the, on the agreement itself so we can get that signed and, and then get the interlocal agreement um, approved by the council, right? Is that the council approves the interlocal? Well, the, the council would approve any type of an agreement. The agreement itself would be between the, um, the mayor's office 
um, as it's currently the structured. consulting agreement. The consulting. I'm agreement. talking about the interlocal between the county and the city on the expenses. On the that, expenses yeah. that would have to go to council. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else on that, uh, Commissioner Flower? Sorry. Oh, thank you. Some of you may have um, heard. Um, myself and others have always thought that there were several graves still remaining um, in parking lot number one, um, where Laurel Park housing complex used to be. There were several um, ground penetrating um, activities and some anomalies were detected. And so they'll be going through that process, much like what we had to do with Pinellas County Schools. So um, I just wanted to, if anyone was not aware of that, just to share that because um, despite what happens with the 86 acres on the backside or the uh, actual contracts with the team, it would have an impact because that's a large part of their parking on that side. Um, and if they are found to be active graves, meaning remains are there, then utilization for that is out, which means income generated from that is out. So I didn't know um, if that will affect us in any way. I do know that there have to, there should be a number of communications between all of us um, because that would be a big deal, mm -hmm. you know, if graves are still located there. I do know from living in the city that prior to Laurel Park being built, uh, families were assured that those internments were moved to Lincoln Cemetery, which is on the um, north side of Bocasiga High School. But apparently not all the remains were moved to Lincoln mm -hmm. Cemetery um, at the time. So just wanted to share that information. If you all weren't aware, maybe um, we could have someone just kind of keep us actively uh, updated on what's going on with that process because, you know, there's a very um, vocal group, not in a negative way, in a positive way, a very vocal group about um, the ancestors of the community and where they were interned and whether or not they're still there and then what would be done to relocate them, you know, to move yep. them and whatnot. So um, you have that sentimental piece, <laughs> you mm -hmm. have the financial piece, yeah. you have the team negotiation piece, and then I'm gonna say intercontinental transfer because you got Canada involved piece. Yeah. So okay. it's just a lot of moving parts yeah. involved in this whole thing, but. Yeah, that's all I have. Okay. All right. Um, then under uh, County Commission, we have appointments to the Pinellas County Construction Licensing Board. Um, we have two, uh, one for a residential contractor, and uh, apparently there's only one that's qualified. Um, that would be David Eldridge. Um, so um, on that one, um, it's pretty straightforward unless uh, somebody wants to make a motion on, on David Eldridge joining uh, the Pinellas County Construction Licensing Board. I need that. Huh? I make a motion for David. Commissioner Peters on the motion. Sure. Commissioner Gerard on the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. On the second one, under consumer uh, representative, we have two that are qualified uh, Lawrence Shear and Jeffrey K Kessock, um, who is also, um, there's nothing, I think he's, uh, does it say he's an elected official, a uh, fire commissioner, or? Did I? What's that? That's share. That's I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, and I assume that that's not an issue here. Is that an issue with uh, being a candidate? No. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So we have two. We have two qualified uh, for that representation, um, and we have ballots. If you'd like to do ballot, that would be fine. Yep, let's do that. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. And as uh, we do that, let's go ahead and do that real quick. And we'll go on to item, let's see, 31, which is the appointment to the Suncoast Health Council. Um, I see one eligible, that's Dameron, Dameron Davis. 
Dameron Davis. Um, who was that? Commissioner Peters. Who made the motion? I'm sorry, Seal. Commissioner Seal. Who was the second? Commissioner Flowers, thank you. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. On to item 32, which is really County Commission new business. Does anybody have anything that they would like to bring forward for conversation? Ms. Commissioner Seal. Um, I know that, um, thank you, Kim. She forwarded you all the um, minutes, the board meeting summary and action sheet for forward Pinellas from May 12th. Um, unless anybody has any questions, the, uh, probably the biggest topic, there were two, was the US 19 frontage road study. So you might wanna take a look at that. Um, we thought that had some problems with decreasing some of the lanes down to one lane versus two um, in some cases on frontage roads. So they're going to take a look at that and come back in the fall of 2021. And then um, previously we've talked about that we adopted the multimodal transportation priorities and added um, some of the overpasses. Yeah, so. and there was a lot of pushback on that first item on the, on the lane reduction for yes. the frontage roads. It was, uh, there seemed to be a lot of people supporting slowing the speeds down, but Correct. eliminating the lanes was a was problematic, I think. So there'll be continuing conversation. Um, yep. Thank you. Yeah. Any anybody else, Commissioner Justice? Just to go through some of the board reports, um, Tampa Bay Estuary Program finalized last Friday morning and submitted our work plan to the EPA. That includes a uh, uh, benthic seagrass monitoring program, a habitat master plan. Uh, research for Old Tampa Bay, which continues to be the one spot in the bay that we have struggled with water quality. Uh, tidal tributaries management program, hook bird awareness program, a boating education resource, and again, a uh, something we do every once in a while, we do an evaluation of the economic value of a healthy bay for Tampa Bay, so that will be important. Uh, Area Agency on Aging of Pasco Pinellas will have our luncheon June 17th. It will be a virtual luncheon. Uh, early, early Learning Coalition, we have our annual meeting this Thursday, um, and what I understand, uh, uh, some very good legislation for child care passed, uh, so we'll get a report on that. Gulf Consortium, our next meeting is in June in Orange County. Uh, the Stormwater Partnership, we have our next meeting this Thursday at 9.30 in the morning at SPC Seminole. It will also be available online uh, if you wanna watch uh, via the web. Uh, we had, for historic preservation, um, I want to thank everyone who joined us Saturday morning for the unveiling of the Dansville State Historical Marker. Uh, especially thank uh, Tom Schofield, uh, Brian Lowack, who I think was back here earlier, and the entire communications team that helped put the event together. Uh, a really a wonderful celebration Saturday morning and um, nice for all the, the official stuff, but if you watch the family kind of gather around and look at that marker and see their family pride in the name on the marker, that was really, really special. So um, a very special occasion. And FYI, that wasn't the permanent site. We'll be moving it a little closer to the corner with a Ridgecrest welcoming sign. Uh, and when we do all that, we'll do another unveiling of the welcoming sign. We'll let you know when that happens as well. Uh, another marker will be unveiled in the Tarpon Springs Historic District June 2nd um, at, I believe, 11 in the morning. That's on the corner of Alternate 19 and Tarpon uh, in uh, downtown Tarpon Springs. We also consulted on the design of a new Fisher House at the uh, uh, Bay Pines VA Center. Uh, that's part of the duties of the Historic Preservation Board opportunity to consult in historic districts. And then finally, uh, I just wanna thank the commission's continued support for the Wounded Warriors Abilities Ranch. Uh, we attended the, their annual gala Saturday night um, and to see uh, Mike Delancey and his team still working hard to make things happen. Over $180,000 was raised Saturday night uh, for the adaptive sports equipment and for tournaments and those kind of things. Um, so really a wonderful night uh, and I appreciate the commission's continued support. And then the last thing is I represented the commission yesterday morning for the Keep Pinellas Beautiful uh, unveiling of a new water goat in downtown St. Pete at the Harbridge. The um, Surfing's Evolution and Preservation Foundation gave Keep Pinellas Beautiful $25,000 uh, for the installation of seven water goats throughout Pinellas County. Thank you, Commissioner Justice. 
Anybody else? Okay, well, I just had just a couple. Yes, I have oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I apologize. Okay. What? Mic, the mic, microphone. Oh. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, the Business Technology Services board meeting is tomorrow afternoon, and we're going to be discussing cybersecurity threats and uh, getting an update on our system. So that should be very interesting. The Tampa Bay Regional Transit Authority, uh, I'm, unfortunately, I was not able to attend on Friday because we had a budget work session, as you may remember, but I do want to let you know that we are very proud that we received a 100% clean audit. And we are now waiting for the governor to sign legislation on our funding request and some tweaks to the board, which will allow uh, the mayors of the two largest cities, St. Petersburg and Tampa, to delegate uh, uh, someone to come to our meetings, which will be enormously helpful because we have had some pretty serious issues arise for not being able to have a quorum. The PSTA board meeting, as you know, Commissioner Gerard, is tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Uh, Commissioner Seal did the recap of Forward Pinellas. Thank you, Commissioner Seal. I am reminding you that the FAC annual conference is June 29th through July 2nd. If you haven't already uh, uh, registered and you want to go, please fill out your registration. Uh, they will also offer opportunities for virtual attendance if that's what you need to do. The Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council meeting was canceled last month, but I also want to remind you that the Climate Summit is set for January 27th and 28th at the Carillon Hilton, and you'll be receiving a lot more information on that to come. I also would like to mention that uh, myself, along with a few of my colleagues here, attended the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office Fallen Officer Memorial on May 12th, and uh, it was a very poignant ceremony, as it always is, but especially this year because of the untimely death of Deputy Magley, and um, his widow was there, and uh, it was, you know, very, very well done. Uh, Doyle and I had an opportunity to tour Tampa International Airport's new quote-unquote express curbs. And if you're someone who uses the airport frequently, I would encourage you to take that tour because it changes the complexity of coming and going, which will be um, very nice in the future. It is slated to open in November for those of you planning any trips. And at lastly, Mr. Chair, I just want to wish a very safe and happy Memorial Day weekend to everyone. It's coming up and we don't meet again until after that. So go forth and enjoy. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, just a couple things real quickly. Uh, just a, a brief update on the, this, the executive assistant search. We are in the middle of of um, interviewing. We did some interviews yesterday. We'll do some more tomorrow and then proceed forward. I wanted to thank uh, Commissioner Justice and Courtney from his office and, of course, Kim from our, our, my office or our office uh, for the incredible work that they've done in getting us to this stage. So we, we're interviewing eight folks um, and we'll choose somebody from that group. Uh, we have some really good selections. Just wanted you all to be aware that that was ongoing. Um, Tampa Bay Water, really nothing uh, happened during the meeting too much. Uh, we did have a workshop, um, certainly not going to get into the details of that, but it had to do with reclaimed water credits, which um, we spoke, we talked for an hour and a half about those reclaimed water credits. But it is an issue as it relates to um, how each of the, uh, the entities, uh, each of the member governments are going to deal with their reclaimed water. 
and if it's used in any way, indirectly or directly, for a potable water source, how they're going to get paid, and so or how they'll get reimbursed for those for that raw product. In the case that we're looking at, it's not a direct use; it's an indirect use. But you're still using, uh, uh, in this case, Hillsborough County's reclaimed water. So we're we're had a nice workshop about that, and we'll have more to come. But clearly, reclaimed water is one of the hot topics of, um, uh, within the Tampa Bay. Well, it's really around the state, but certainly for Tampa Bay water as well. Um, and then just uh, uh, also wanted to echo uh, what Commissioner Long said about uh, happy Memorial Day. Um, enjoy the family, enjoy the time off, and do what you can to try to remember the essence of what that day is all about. And if you get a chance to to go to a to a, a, a ceremony, then get it, do that. I think it's it would be really really um, moving and important for your families, uh, for your, the young kids especially. Um, and before we close out here, I did. There's two items that we need to talk about. I'm going to have Jewel talk about. We took a vote at our last meeting about the Southside CRA, and we're going to talk about that briefly, about a membership, uh, about a member to the CRA. Um, and then we're also, just before we announce the results of our PCCLB vote, that there may be an issue there. So I'm going to let Jewel talk to both of those. Thank you. Uh, let me start with uh, PCCLB. I've had some very quick research done, and it is not a problem to have an elected official appointed to that board. It's not apparent on the face of the special act. We just looked very quickly to make sure it would not create a dual office holding issue, and it does not. Okay. So. So, and those results? <laughs> Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lawrence Shear was selected as the consumer representative for the Pinellas County Construction Licensing Board. Okay, thank you. So thank we'll you. We'll let them know. Then you have one so, other. Um, as you all recall, at the last meeting, you made several appointments to the South CRA um, Advisory Board for St. Petersburg, and a question was raised regarding one of the applicants and one of the appoint eventual appointees who is employed with CHAF, Contemporary Housing Alternatives of Florida, and you all raised the issue of whether that would be a conflict of interest. So since your last meeting, I have conferred with the city attorney in St. Petersburg and found that CHAF does in fact have contracts with the city and that is expected to be an ongoing relationship. Now, what you all could choose to do is there is a specific provision in the ethics code that allows appointing boards such as yourselves in this instance when you are appointing to an advisory board you may choose to waive that conflict you would need to do that by a two-thirds vote um, it would be an ongoing conflict that the city would need to manage and just make sure that the individual appropriately abstained on votes um, I will say this is not dissimilar to actions that this board has taken in the past when this issue has arisen in regard to TDC appointments you have made. And it really is not uncommon on advisory boards where, um, where you're seeking to engage stakeholders. So I'll put it that way. I just wanted to put that out there. I don't know whether this is something you all want to take any action on. We can certainly you know, defer action, but it, it is something that we will need to, to address. So the conflict, obviously, we don't, we're not dealing with that, but the city of St. Petersburg could be dealing with that based on our appointment. That is correct. Okay. And, and really what that would come down to, it would be identifying potential conflicts that may come, which would be you know, recommending or voting on projects that involve chaff, and then appropriately abstaining from taking action on those votes. Not just us. Commissioner Flowers? I'm sorry abstaining from those votes, but also abstaining from any conversation leading up to, so any conversation, dialogue, review of applications or anything of that nature, and they need to do that in advance of, okay, of any votes. Commissioner if, if, uh, if that were the Commissioner point. Justice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So if we chose not to waive, then we would need to rescind that appointment or what would what what are our action points here? I the person the, the individual 
is really not properly appointed at this point because um, it was, you know, it was something that was raised late at the meeting. We weren't aware. Um, I did go back, like I said, and get the information that, that my staff needed from the city of St. Pete, who, like I said, did confirm that there is a contractual relationship and there is anticipated to be an ongoing contractual relationship. So it's a conflict of interest under the Florida Ethics Code, and it is a prohibited conflict, which means that individual cannot be on the committee. This is, this is however, one of those rare instances, since it's an advisory board, that you all, as the appointing body, could choose to waive the conflict. So that would need to be done uh, in order for her to remain on the advisory board, or you would simply need to pick an alternative member for that board. If, uh, would I, were there two folks that were? I believe you made three appointments, and it was one individual that this applied to out of those three. So the two would be fine. The other two are fine. Okay, so do we have another person? Do we have another person? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, there was, I think it was three out of five or something like that. There were more and than we, three, as I there recall. There was another person that um, is currently on there that there was some desire not to have that person serve anymore. Um, by by some commissioners, and so that was where the conversation went, and went to this person. Um, so I don't know if that person's still interested in serving, if the other applicants are still interested in serving, okay. or if if you want to take up the a waiver of the ethics today, or we put that on the agenda for the next BCC meeting. Yeah, yeah, it's really it really uh, comes down. I, I think probably the, the the smart thing to do would be to kind of just slow it down a little bit and rescind that. Um, and and reconsider, but uh, you know, obviously that is this. I mean, I think we just need to pause, let the let the person know that we have an issue that's been raised, and we're going to have to reconsider it at our next meeting. So, yes, Commissioner Seal. And if that's the case, then I would suggest that somebody who was on the prevailing side make the motion. The prevailing side of appointing the sit person, the person from Chaps. And it looks like, just going back to your agenda from last week, um, you were to choose three, and there were four individ individuals that are eligible to be appointed. Okay. The fourth one, I think, was a person that was currently on the board. Who? Yeah. I thought there was five, so uh, that's why I was suggesting the, we... There's a number of people on the roster. It's okay. just that I only <coughs> see four that are four checked that... as eligible. Okay. So so then we could we could uh, rescind the, the, the persons and, and choose the other one right now. We could wait till the next meeting, or we could waive the, waive the, the conflict. Correct. Many of those would be appropriate. So really, I don't really want to belabor it. I mean, I, but what's the will of the commission? Well, I don't have any problem waiving that requirement if we do that for other boards. Um, I don't know that we have to do it today. Maybe we just I, I, don't, I don't know think that, that we you, need to re-vote on it. I don't think that you need to. It's certainly something that you all could, you know, think about and prepare for at your next meeting. I did just want to raise it because it is, you know, information that I was able to receive. Um, we would certainly be in contact with the city because at this point they were just simply preparing to do new board member orientation. We could ask them to put that on hold for this particular individual at least. And who and who would notify that our appointee that that there might there might be an issue that we're going to reconsider at the next meeting. I don't know if anybody's been notified. If he's okay. been notified yet, so I don't know. Do we know anybody? So somebody will have to get with that person, and is what I'm saying, and let them know that we'll be reconsidering that at the next meeting. I think that's the direction probably we ought to go. All right. If I don't see any objections to that, that's what we'll do. All right. Great. Thank you. Anything else before we close um, two and a half hours before our six o'clock meeting? Um, and dinner is supposed to be here at 430. So <laughs> we have two and a half hours before the next meeting. Um, we could actually have all the three presentations. No, I'm kidding. Um, and, um, and then <laughs> lunch will be here in an, uh, or dinner will be here in an hour. So with that, with nothing else to talk about, the meeting is adjourned.